as I look out on you tonight. I have marched with many of you, gone to jail with some of you. And as I think about what we've experienced as a nation over the past eight years, that we gathered here not simply because of ourselves, but because some other folks were willing to sacrifice for something bigger than themselves and older than themselves. Among them in this house tonight, Vincent Harding. <laughs> Dr. James Forbes. Rabbi Arthur Waska. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Joan Brown Campbell. <laughs> Rabbi Michael Vernon. <laughs> and last but not least, the Reverend Dr. Rita Nagashima Brock. at a moment where it seemed that the historic struggle and heroic victories and gains that these individuals that I have just named and so many of you in this room would not have come to be. That much will be said about our moment, about dreams being realized, and that perhaps dreams will not have been realized in the classic sense of the word, Hebrews 11, and one says that faith is the substance of things hope for and the evidence of things not seen, that these elders that I have just named willed you here, that by their power and by their struggle and by their conviction, you are the evidence of what they could not see and the hope that they ultimately believed in. And then much will be said about this moment that oh, oh, because we have elected an African American president that racism is dead, that we are in a post-partisan and in a post-racial America, and there is a danger in that. Well, the danger in that is that over one million black and brown men, many of them illiterate, reside in prisons in the U.S., three of them being my own biological brothers. 45 million Americans without health care, black and brown people disproportionately affected, school systems in crisis, black and brown children disproportionately affected, and so the danger for us is not that we hope, but that we don't hope enough. And so we have a 